Hello. Uh, welcome to my virtual environment. So, uh, about a month ago, I published a video showing off some physical objects that I'd made in Unity 3D that could be used with the HTC Vive. And I've come uh, quite a bit of ways, I'd say, since then, and I wanted to show off some new things that I've been working on. The system that I've developed for all this is very heavily uh, based on Newton VR, which is a system published for uh, uh, manipulating physical objects in Unity 3D. Uh, I wrote mine all myself, but the crux of it is very similar to Newton VR. I, I, I sort of pulled that apart and looked at it and used what I could in my own system. Uh, I also used a tutorial by a guy named Sean Lee, uh, and I'll be linking to both of these things in the, the comment section of the, the video. But uh, his, his tutorial was you know invaluable, and, and as far as explaining what's going on and, and uh, how to manipulate objects in, in, in Unity 3D by setting their velocity uh, as opposed to, you know, other methods, you know, parenting them to the, the controllers or something like that. And that's basically what I've done. Uh, but since then, I took the, the key and lock uh, paradigm that I was working on because I, I, I thought that I would be able to apply that, that code elsewhere uh, pretty extensively. It would be pretty adaptable to uh, any other kind of... Uh, scenario that I would need it. So I, I kept pursuing that and I, I've actually gotten it to the point that it's pretty usable. Um, first of all, before I go any farther, the environment is obviously a little bit more interesting now than it was in the first video. Uh, that video was pretty empty or that environment was pretty empty but since then I've, I've gotten a few assets like these rocks and those trees, uh, the grass and the sky. I, I got these uh, these assets off the of Unity 3D asset store. They were free. You know, I didn't have to pay for them anything but uh, it, they make the scene a little bit more interesting. So if you're wondering where those came from, that's where they came from. This chest and the lock, however, they were repurposed from a previous project that I'd worked on uh, for Un uh, Unreal Engine 4, actually. So I had to rebake all the maps. Uh, and, you know, I, the, the chest was originally for a, an aquarium simulator where you were a fish and you'd swim through the aquarium and this chest would open and then bubbles would come out. Uh, so I obviously had to make it a little bit bigger. And while I, I'm pretty sure it, it's going to look pretty good on the video that you're watching, in, in virtual reality with the, you know, both eyes being rendered and giving you depth, the, the normal maps look pretty flat. So I will probably have to add a higher level of detail to this in order to sell it a little bit better. Uh, it, as it is now, it looks more like a box that's been painted to look like a chest than it looks like a chest. So I'd probably have to add some geometry around these, these uh, bands and the boards and everything in order for it to look more realistic uh but you know this is the conundrum of virtual reality assets so um anyway back to the the task at hand in the last video i had a key and i had a lock by the way the key has a you know a, a couple thousand polygons for the key. but i probably went uh, way overboard on this and there are no levels of detail, so it's, you know, it, it's a couple thousand polygons here and over there, and I could throw it over there, still a couple thousand polygons. And that's really, really bad, if you ask me. And uh, if I was ever going to do anything serious, you know, I, I with any of this, you know, this is going to get another level of detail, and this is going to get a lot more levels of detail uh, going down, but, in detail. But this, uh, even the highest level of detail probably won't be as high as it is now, if it ever turns into anything, anything serious because this I just went overboard on this. Uh, the lock, however, it was pretty, and uh, you know, I'm squatting now physically in real life, you know, because that's, this is, that is what I, we're working with. Uh, the vibe is pretty awesome, virtual reality to, to the next level, you know. Uh, but this lock, uh, it lent itself pretty well, I'd say. It's pretty simple shape, so it didn't have a whole lot of uh, detail and form that, that had to be filled out with maps or anything. So it, it still works pretty well. Uh, I should also say that everything here was textured in, well, everything that I made here was textured in Substance uh, Painter, which is an incredible program. It really makes, it, it allows you to make some really good looking stuff pretty easily. Anyway, so the lock and the key. I got this to work pretty well, you know, like, uh, and the, the lock, you know, works. It keeps the thing closed and everything. Uh, and this is the system I've got for unlocking. So it, it works pretty intuitively. The, the code itself, uh, the underlying core functionality is pretty good. There's some parameters I'm probably going to have to tweak, uh, but you'll see what I'm talking about in a second. So if you put it in there, and that's what I'm talking about, it snaps all the way out here. So I'll probably have to fix that. But the, the underlying code works pretty well. So you can put it in, and then when you get it in, 
it starts to pick up the rotation of the manipulator and you can twist it and it unlocks which is pretty cool um and you can pull the lock off as you would in real life the uh the lock itself and then you can pull the key out if you want uh the lock itself uh is a physical object and the hook the lock hook is also a physical object here let me put this down the the hook itself is another physical object and they're they're bound together with a physics joint a configurable joint and honestly i wasn't expecting that to work but it does it works exactly how uh you you would want it to uh the here, let me pick up the key again and i'll show you so so let me uh, unlock this guy so the the lock hook spins and it even goes you know it, it moves uh vertically just like any and the the hook itself will collide with the body of the lock there are a lot of colliders in here so it probably isn't as efficient as it could be and i'll have to work on that but uh for the most part it, it as it as it stands now it, it does what i needed to do and i'm pretty happy with it i was pretty ecstatic when i got this to work um and that was like the first major hurdle i got to i knew if i could do this i could apply it to a lot of other things later down the road and i was i was pretty happy when i got it this far um and i'll just put this let me grab this put it back in it's locked put this over here because i don't really need it anymore right now now here's the chest what's in the chest well let's find out so uh the chest the bottom of the chest is uh it, it is not an interactable object i found that when you're opening it if it is, if it has a rigid body and everything, eh, the way the, fit, the, the physics system, uh, maybe I just need to play with it a little bit more, but it, it was really hard to get it to stay in one place. I had to make it weigh something like 500 kilograms, which is incredible, you know, uh, and completely unrealistic in order for it to, to stay in place when you open the lid. And who knows why that is. Uh, maybe I can just play with the variables and get that to work better. But as it is right now, the, the, the chest itself doesn't move, but the lid and the latch do. And they are uh, bound to each other just like the, the lock hook is with uh, physics. Uh, I, I think these are just configurable joints. So you grab the, the latch and you pull up. And oh, it's bonus points for anybody who knows uh, where that sound effect's from. And. <laughs> Tick button. <laughs> so, oh, caught on there. So the next thing I did was I moved to uh, interactive. I, I wanted to make an interactive uh, skinned character mesh, something you could grab and play around with. You know, uh, some you know you can grab his arms, and you know he reacts the way you'd want him to. You know, I don't know if I should have made a dick butt, <laughs> but I did. Uh, he exists. He is a thing now. But um, the way I did this was uh, it, it's actually two assets. The first asset is the skinned mesh, which I made in Maya, textured in substance, and, and rigged in Maya. And, and, and then I imported that into um, I imported that into Unity. And uh, the second asset is uh, a chain of physical objects. They're basically all just uh, spheres and whatnot. And they're placed along the joints, along the limbs and everything. And uh, they're, they're what I'm actually grabbing. You can't see them, they're invisible. But uh, when I grab his arm, I'm actually grabbing one of those colliders. And the joints to the skin mesh are constrained to those colliders. So when the, the colliders move, the joints move. And that's how I, I pulled this off. And I was, I wanted to do it with, you know, our ra the ragdoll system that's built into Unity, but I really couldn't, I couldn't figure out how to get that to work with my system of interactive objects. Which was it, that? That was the, the kind of uh, limiting factor, but uh, this this seemed to work. I had to constrain them with code. I wish there was a the, the, maybe a UI, you know, option in Unity for constraining joints, but maybe that's too much to ask for. The, the code and you know, doing it in code really wasn't that big of a deal. Um, all of his appendages work, even the dick. If you want to grab that? Hold on. Ooh. That doesn't look right. Oh, here we go. Oh, oh, hold on. He's more of like a beach ball, I guess you'd say, like a big dick butt beach ball and th yes this is the thing now so anyway yeah that's dick butt <laughs> i don't know how many skinned virtual uh physical meshes there are in in the world right now but i know I can, i'm sure this is the first interactive uh skinned dick butt in the world so i don't know if i should be proud of that but it's a thing now <laughs> and there it goes um 
so from there, I was like, well, what about weapons? Everybody's been doing guns a lot. I wanted to do something, you know, a little bit more physical, more involved. And so I started working on these nunchucks. Ooh, let me get this. There we go. Now, these don't work as well as I'd like them to, honestly. They, they work all right, but I think I'm asking a lot of the physics engine uh, with these. They're, they're very similar to the dick button, this, but more similar to the stick butt, I guess. Uh, there's a collider along each of the handles. There's a collider on the rope. And uh, the mesh itself, and the mesh, it's a rigged mesh, and the colliders are influencing the joints of the rigged mesh. So what I'm actually grabbing are the, the colliders or the interactive objects that are bound to the mesh. Um, and, you know, after a lot of tweaking, when I first put this together, it just, it just basically exploded. The, the physics engine was very unhappy with me. But uh, since then, I've, I've tweaked with it a lot, and I've gotten it to work, you know, somewhat. The, the system, like I said earlier, it relies on setting the object's velocity in order to position them. And I think that because of that, uh, it, it's very open to their reaching limits, you know. And, like, I'll show you. So this, is be, this, this handle right now is being set, uh, its velocity is being set to be in this, this uh, manipulator's hand. And now this one is... Uh, being set to be in this manipulator's hand, and they're they're connected with physical joints. But if I go in opposite directions, their velocity is going to go higher and higher and higher. But it's fighting against each other, and it just well, I'll show you. Yeah, the physics engine just loses its its damn mind. So, uh, and that isn't the only case in which that happens. You know, like if I hit something, it can yeah. There you go. So I'm gonna have to set some sort of like hard limit somewhere. I'm not sure where. Like maybe if it gets to be too much, it'll automatically just let go or something. I don't know. Or maybe just put a hard limit on the, the velocity of the, the objects. There, there actually already are a few hard limits, but no, they must be not as hard as I think. Um, overall, I mean, I guess this is probably just proof of concept. You know, uh, it work. They, they work all right. You know, they, you know, like I can beat my dick butt here with my <laughs> checks. Uh, but you know, they, they flip out a little bit. Uh, I'm not really sure how to fix that. If anybody has any suggestions, I am totally open. Uh, uh, to how to fix that. But as of right now, they're, they're not really, you know, ready for game time. But yeah, like I said, proof of concept. They, they work okay. Um, and the other thing is, you know, well, they come out of the hand a little bit, and I think that's some, just some craziness going on with the physics of the object based on the, the daisy chain of joints going between the two handles. And they don't really go as fast as they should. Like, you know, like this should just, yeah. Anyway, real life nunchucks, they go a lot faster than that. You can do some cool things with them. Oh, 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 there we go. And then, you know, I don't know. They, proof of concept. But they, they work all right uh, for now. We'll see how they how they go later. If I can fix them or not. But, uh, yeah. So that's all I got as of right now here. Uh, thanks for watching. Uh, Dick Butt, it's time for you to go, buddy. I'll see you later. Uh, and tune in next time. Let's see what other crazy contraptions I can put together for you. Oh, oh, I got the key. All right. Thanks a lot. Bye.